guys this is Jess from Jessica G photography and today I'm gonna to be showing you a little bit about presets and using Lightroom so one of the main things to keep in mind is you want to make sure you have the latest version of Lightroom when you're getting one of my preset collections because I do have the subscription to Lightroom so just make sure that you have the latest version and another thing to keep in mind is that different preset collections will work differently for different cameras. For example, the, the Fauna presets, the Muse, and Sugar presets work really well for Nikon cameras. Um, and the Flora, Muse, Moonstruck, Natural Love, Primavera, and Rosewood work really well for Canon cameras. And that will vary and it'll depend on, on the image and uh, one of the main things is lighting so getting the lighting correct and your camera settings correct in in camera is one of the most important things so uh, getting that beautiful sook or straight out of camera shot is very important and I do teach how to achieve this look on my online course posing with Jess 3.0 so uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick a preset and then I'll, I'll show you how to tweak that preset um, according to baby's skin tone and perhaps your style. Um, in this case, I'm going to be using the Primavera presets. They do have a more um, softer, natural look. So I'm going to be picking one of these. One of the ones I really liked was Cherry Blossom and we could probably just go ahead with this one skin tones are looking good here but just to show you how you would tweak it um, one of the main things is exposure if you're underexposing, then you want to make sure you adjust the exposure and this depending on your style if you like more shadows or less shadows that's up to you And one of the other things I like to tweak is the skin tone. I mean, skin tone looks beautiful here, but um, if you needed to adjust, you go to the HSL color and you go to the hue and you adjust the oranges. In this case, um, I don't need to tweak it a lot. I might do a little bit more, a softer orange there, so plus one. And then we're good to export this file and open it in Photoshop. So the way we're going to do that, actually, before I continue, after I've picked the preset and I tweaked it for that specific prop, uh, what you can do, which is one of the things I love about Lightroom, is you click shift, click, and make sure you're on the develop page and you synchronize. And what that's going to do is going to apply that preset to all those files that you selected so i love it for consistency and quicker edit and um, one of the things you want to do too before continuing is because your lighting might be a little bit different on each photo then you want to adjust that exposure as needed all right, so then uh, now we're going to export this file. I'm gonna go to library and make sure that I have that file selected. And we're gonna do export. Now you can do different settings here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on the desktop and I'm not gonna put it in a subfolder, but you could. And I have a uh, baby's name and here are the file settings. So JPEG, Photoshop, PNG, DNG, and original. Original would be the raw. I choose uh, Photoshop because I like to save as I go when I'm editing on Photoshop. So that's why I choose a Photoshop file when I'm exporting. Okay. Now we're gonna go, we're gonna head into Photoshop. Okay, so we're here in Photoshop and um, before I continue, I did want to go through a little bit of 
um, how to have this screen here. These are my finishing touch actions. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close these here so you guys can see how I set it up. So it's like if you're opening Photoshop for the first time, um, then what you want to do is you go to view up here in the menu. I don't think it's showing right here because I'm not recording it, but you go to view, um, actually window. <laughs> You get a window and we're going to select actions and you might see it like this when it first uh, pops up. So what you're going to do is to click the buttons here and click button mode. Um, I do change between button mode and this mode a lot because in this mode you can do a batch edit, which is that, for example, if I have five files open, then I'm going to do file automate batch. And then that's going to play the action that I selected on all of those files open. So, but in this case, we're going to go button mode because we're only editing one image. And these are the finishing touch actions. And then I'm going to get the other tools that I had. So that's going to be my histogram. Actually, not the histogram. Wrong one. History. Right here. So history, a judge adjustments and layers so I think I have it all set in one but you can see them here so actions adjustments history layers and properties and then I'm also gonna click on tools right here okay so we have the different tools here and we can start by cropping so we're going to crop there. I'm so like I'm clicking shift as I'm cropping so it stays proportionate to the image. And another cool trick when you're cropping is clicking content aware at the top here. And then that's going to fill in the background for you. Again, making sure you have the latest version of Photoshop for all these tools. Now I'm going to go ahead and select the clone tool and for here for the background. There's different ways to go about it. You can use the clone, you can use the patch, and you can use something that is a copy select. So we'll start with, we'll start with the copy select because it'll be easier for this area here. So I'm using the marquee tool and then I'm going to do control click and I'm going to click copy going to create that extra layer there and I'm going to click command option shift copy and then I'm going to click shift and then I'm going to drag so it's going to so it's going to expand the background and all you have to do is erase here and then we're going to merge the layers. so this is a very important part when you're using actions is merging the layers or flattening the image you can do that by Control click and do merge visible, flatten image, or you can do a shortcut, shift command E. And I'm pretty sure I created that shortcut. So the way to do it is you go to edit and keyboard shortcuts and then you add your own. Okay, so I'll just keep going here. Now I'm gonna use the clone tool. So using the clone tool, I'm gonna click option, click, and again, I'm using a Mac so the buttons might be a little bit different if you're using Microsoft. And the option is what it's going to do is going to select that part of the background that you're clicking. For example, if I go here, then it's going to clone that, but we don't want that there. So, And here in this area, we could probably select here the flow board, see how that looks. And it went a little bit brighter there, so I'm going to use the patch. And I'm going to drag that to so it blends in the background a little bit more. All right, so I'm going to save it. Command save, another shortcut. I like to save always as I go in case you have a computer all of a sudden turns off or for whatever reason, then you don't have to start from scratch again all right so now um, let's work on the skin so let's zoom in here and I'm gonna run the action skin no blemishes 
And when running actions, run, make sure you run one action at a time and you merge the layers before you run the next action. So I'm going to use the brush tool here and let's look to my logo. <laughs> so um, when you're brushing, this here is a layer and this is a layer mask. So make sure that you have this layer mask selected when you're brushing and your opacity of the brush is set to 100% and it's white. So if you have it on black, it's not going to do anything because it's already black. But if you change it to white, then your action will work. Another uh, thing that sometimes happens is if you click on this here and you brush, it's not going to work. So just make sure you're clicking the layer mask right there. And then I'm brushing at 100% opacity. And what I like to do is if I need to, I'll adjust the opacity of the layer. And then here I'm going to do 50% opacity on the brush. Just a tiny bit because I don't want to go too much. And then here, over here is where you select the opacity of the layer. I can go 100% in this one, so it's fine. And then I'm going to merge the layer. So before and after, I'm going to merge. And I like to save. Um, then over here on the, on the patch tool, you can do a control click and you'll find the spot healing tool. And I'm going to use that for these little pieces here that are a little bit more sharp. And I can't use um, the other um, action. All right, so going good. Now I'm gonna work on the reds. So I'm gonna run the action, no reds. I'm gonna brush here, make sure my brush is at 100% opacity. And I'm brushing on the reds. Um, sometimes I like to go over here um, in which case I might do a little bit, I might do 50% opacity because what I like to do is um, I like to kind of desaturate, take away the red and then bring it back exactly where I want to. So, And I'm going to zoom out just to make sure that those skin tones are look accurate. So 80% there on opacity and merge the layers and save. Now we can move on to uh, the skin retouching. The, this, the finishing touch actions include three. Uh, one of my favorites and my go-tos is Flawless Finish and Newborn Glow. Natural Love I like to use for more sitter sessions or cake smash, um, that type of editing. So I'm gonna use Flawless Finish. Okay, so now we're gonna brush over baby's skin. Oh, make sure I'm 100% opacity here on the brush. So that's over right at the top here. Okay, now um, the opacity you can select however much you want. I It usually varies for me between babies depending on how much I want to do. Sometimes I'll use 80, sometimes I use a little bit more. In this case I'm going to use 75 or actually I'm going to use 70 on this first one because um, I might run um, the skin newborn glow just for this area right here.
and I do get asked a lot how to achieve you know the creamy beautiful skin tones and one of the main parts and most important parts is lighting camera settings and of course posing so I do go over that in the posing with just 3.0 and as I mentioned before I'll leave the link below if you're um, interested in learning those So this one will be more for that patchy skin and blending it in. And you can choose the opacity that you like. I'm going to do 40% here, not too much. And let's just see a quick before and after so far before and after. Now, a few things I like to do, um, since I have this, uh, sometimes it gets a little bit shadow here. So I'm gonna use no purples and see how that works out for this area here. And I'm going to reduce the opacity there, making sure that it's blending in. So that's 40% opacity and I'm merging before I continue. Now I'm going to use the action creamy skin. Um, which actions I use will vary depending on, on the baby's skin tone. So I don't always use this action. I only use it when I when I need it. So that's 15% there and merge. Now I'm going to use one click haze and this is for the background. This is optional. And I'm gonna so I'm gonna click here, double click, and then I can select the color that I want to use. The floorboards are cream, so I want to use like something of a light cream here. I'm gonna go a little bit more subtle there, maybe 15, um, actually 10% there. Quick crop there and save. Let's do a quick before and after. Um, this uh, collection has so many things you could use to add your own unique style, which is what I absolutely love from it, is that you can create the style that you like. So um, I'm gonna add in this case, maybe definition And I love the contrast that it adds. I'm gonna go with 25% here. And I'm gonna do flawless finish again, just a little bit here, because I'm a bit picky. And one thing I like to do when I'm editing is um, I will have the files that I'm that I'm editing. Say if I'm doing 10 images, I'll do the batch edit of this action, which is the flawless finish, and I'll go do something. And then I also make sure I save those files before I start editing because it does take a little bit to run the action. That's looking more like what I want to. Then we're going to use uh, night and day. 
So night uh, will be to brush over the shadow area and day will be for where you want the highlights to be. You can do that just here in, in the middle. You can do it around. There's so many different ways you can use this. So I'm gonna merge. I'm gonna, I started a new layer. Sorry, I kind of skipped over that. So you select in the background, you do command J to create a copy and then you hide the original. So that's the original and that's what we just did. So here I'm going to select the opacity. I'm always around mm, no more than 20 with this. So be 15% in that case. I might go lower 10%, just very subtle. And another cool thing you can do with this is you can go like this. That was command I to invert the mask. And what you do is you brush here and then you pull the focus in on the baby. This is uh, an editing style. I don't do this, but it's something you could do. And then you can like brush here, and, like really pull in the focus on the baby. So just some cool things that you can do with that. All right, I'm gonna delete those. If Photoshop lets me. <laughs> all right, and then I'm saving. Um, I also have these other here. Um, these are already colors that are selected. So Perfect Cream is one of my favorite ones. And Creamy Goodness, I love it too. And Wood Floor, I use a lot. I might use Perfect Cream, 20% there. Um, I use it because it adds that, that soft touch. And we'll do another before and after. And we're pretty much done. Um, anything else would be just to add a little bit extra. This is Sweet Sugar Glow, for example. 10%. And I did want to go over a skin tone because um, I've been getting a lot of questions about that action. So I'm going to run skin tone. And I usually use it as it is with this color here. But another thing I like to do to um, for skin tones is if, um, for example, like just a brush here, a brush here to blend in. Oh, and I forgot to bring the rosy cheeks. I'm going to do that after. So right now, obviously it's too strong. I never use it at 40% opacity. So reducing that to 10% to blend in those skin tones a little bit and maybe five. And another thing I like to do with skin tone is I double click and I select the color around here, around the shadow area. And I'm gonna brush the highlights only. This is something I like to do. It's not like it's a rule or anything. And I like to use maybe, I don't know, 15%. And I can double click on that and use the eyedropper or I can select the color that I prefer from here. And if you're editing a gallery, I like to, if you selected a color skin tone, I like to save this number right here so you can copy paste it on the next one. Otherwise you'll forget which color you used. So uh, just keep that in mind. So I'm going to use that one. Right now I have uh, the opacity is really high, so I'm going to reduce that. I'm going to make it like 5%. And it's very subtle, but it kind of blends in the skin tones, at least in my opinion. <laughs> so, and you can even go a little bit lower there. Or, or maybe three. It's very subtle, but it's there and it blends it in. So save, and now I'm gonna do rosy cheeks. And scrumptious lips. I'm gonna use the bottom layer here. And we can increase the opacity a little bit on that. Yeah. 
and that's pretty much done and then if you want to add a little bit more of a style to your images I have my other actions these are the coffee house and these are the boho chic so if you want to add something extra and make it unique you could add one of these actions for example we could do macrame and we can reduce that opacity a little bit too bright for me so maybe um, cotton I think for this one maybe fig tree and I also like Monstera Bora Bora is one of my favorite ones there's so many so you can pick and choose as you see like this one adds a little bit more of those green tones so it really just depends on your editing style. I kind of like that, so there we go. And then um, high definition I use for my clients was uh, sharpening for clients. And I use ready to post for um, web posting and um, to go on the internet. Another cool thing sometimes when uploading an image to your website, uh, you could do like a file export and export as, and then make sure you get the color profile, export as JPEG with the color profile. That way it won't change the colors when you're uploading um, an image to your website. And what else? I also did wanna show, um, this is probably not the greatest example because it's, it's a white background, so it might not work, but we can try it. It's the one click color. Oh, it worked sort of well. So it here it kind of blended in. And then here you can just like select the color that you want. It works really well for Flocati. Oh, I kind of like that. So add a little bit more orange there, which is cool. But I'm gonna go without it. This is more um, if you have a Flocati photo that you want to change the color, it's really cool. And, and then we also have the one click haze, one click background blur, which is for uh, beanbag photos for the fabrics and the one click background smoother. So it's pretty cool. A lot of stuff to use here. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, just leave a like cause I'm gonna turn comments off cause you know. <laughs> so just leave a little like button and you can subscribe to the channel and I might be creating more of these videos if, if you guys like them. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.